everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I love macOS, but one thing I've been notoriously bad at in the past has been letting my system turn into a bit of a mess. Being super organized and efficient by no means comes naturally to me at all. I'm a pretty creative person and oftentimes that means my mind is also a bit chaotic and with me working at my Mac so much during the day, it's taken me a long time to find the right apps, not only to help with organization, productivity and creativity, but also just manage my system over a long period of time so I'm not doing a factory reset every couple times a year. Today, I wanna go over some of my favorite game-changing apps that have helped me over the years in a variety of ways that I can't live without. Some of these might be new to you, some you may have seen before, but I might use a little bit differently. So if you're looking to improve your Mac OS experience at all, or you're struggling with some of the things that I just mentioned, stick around and let's get into it. All right, so like I said, being super organized, especially when it comes to structure outside of software projects is something that I really struggle with on my own. So anytime that there's a tool out there that can help me in that regard or simplify something for me, I'm all for it. That starts with the operating system. So let's kick things off by diving into some of the apps that help me every day with how macOS works. The first one is called Magnet. I've used this app for years, as long as I can remember. And as someone who switches back and forth between Windows and Mac, one thing that I've always used used on Windows a ton is snapping a window to a particular place on the screen. For the longest time, Mac didn't really have anything like this and they eventually added the ability to tile a window to the left or right, but I still stick with Magnet just due to its ease of use. I like the fact that with Magnet, I can just click and drag a window over to one side of the screen and it just snaps into place with a nice little visual cue with the space that it'll occupy. And there are a whole bunch of different options for that window size, depending on where you drag your window or cursor to. You can also set the size in the magnet menu at the top as well, or through keyboard shortcuts. But for me, just that quick little visual snap feature without having to hold anything down is super helpful. A magnet isn't free. I think it usually hovers around $7.99, but you only pay it once. It's worth checking out if you're looking for something to help you multitask and organize your windows. Another app that really helps me with my workflow and organization that is fairly new to me is something called Dropover. I've been using this a lot recently to help me move around and share my files. Basically what this app does is create what they call a shelf, which is just this little window that comes up and acts as a container for all the files that you want to do something with. Now, the main thing would be something like moving a bunch of files from multiple locations into a single location elsewhere. With my mind being a bit chaotic, especially when I'm working on creative stuff, I can tend to struggle with folders and organization. So when I address that or when I'm trying to clean up a mess that I've made, I find this really helpful. You can either grab some files and shake them to bring up a shelf, or you can use a keyboard shortcut as well. That way you don't have to navigate through multiple copy and paste events or drag and drops, and it just reduces the amount of time it takes to work your way through everything. Everything. That's not even my favorite part though. I can actually see my previous shelves that I've used. So if I ever need to do something else with those files again, I can quickly access them. And it also integrates with cloud storage like Google Drive and Dropbox so you can quickly upload and create shareable links. That's super handy if you're doing client work where you need to share local files with someone. And overall, it's just a nice little feature set. There's a pro version and a free version of Dropover. The pro version is only a one-time purchase of five bucks. Another great tool for managing clutter and system files is Clean My Mac. Some people prefer to do a lot of this work themselves through terminal commands or manually handling a lot of this, which is fine if that's your thing, but I prefer to use this app just because of its ease of use and how much stuff is included. I can clean up system junk, which is very useful if you use apps like Xcode and wanna clear out all the crap that you don't need. There's optimizations and maintenance that can be really helpful at times to free up space or adjust what apps get launched when you log in. And the feature that I love the most is the uninstaller. I install a lot of apps on my machine. Some are for testing products out, some creative apps, stuff for software development. And instead of trying to get rid of all those installs myself when I'm done with them, I like to just pop in here and remove them because it usually gets rid of any straggling files that get left over. You can see everything is grouped here and it shows me what apps I don't use, leftovers from old installs and so on. I can also update all my apps, see storage maps to get an idea of how I'm using my storage, which unsurprisingly for me is mostly video content. 
and I can find larger old files that I can clean up. There's also a malware scanner, which has caught a few things for me in the past. And overall, I kind of think of this as a hub for keeping everything clean and tidy. But like I said, some people aren't into this. It is 40 bucks a year, so it is one of the more pricey apps on the list. But I do know a lot of folks who just like having everything easily manageable from one spot like this. With that being said, let's hop over to some free apps, one of which is likely on your machine if you have macOS Ventura installed. Freeform is a new app app included not only in macOS, but on iPadOS and iOS, which I use a ton for planning out these videos and just to organize my thoughts visually. I use this pretty much every week when I do reviews to organize all my talking points. I'm kind of still old school in that when I'm testing out a product, I like to write everything down in a notebook. And during that stage, it's very much just info or ideas jotted down in no particular order. So with Freeform, I can start to group everything together and see how everything shapes up visually. There are loads of different objects you can put in here. I'm sure you could build software diagrams or business related charts even. And I just find it really helpful for diagramming in general. So if you're on iOS 16, iPad OS 16, or Mac OS Ventura, you should be able to just open it up and check it out. Another free planning tool that I use daily, probably the least surprising on the list is Notion, which I use as a little creator hub. Admittedly, I'm still trying to get better at using this, but I've watched quite a few videos on different Notion setups, and I've got something that works pretty well for me. I've got my main creator dashboard where I can add new video ideas or content that I want to do. And then I have a video template that I usually work from with all my info from description, title ideas, thumbnail ideas, B-roll checklist, all that good stuff. And one thing that I use, especially for research, is a plugin for Notion called Save to Notion. I have this added to my web browser, and anytime I find a site with some useful information for a video that I'm working on or something that I'm learning, I can click the extension and it will add this page into a Notion database that I choose. Then I can bring any of these entries into a specific video template and it just makes it a lot more functional than just bookmarking something within a browser. I can also keep track of all my expenses, brands and clients in Notion. And because there are options in here to make these tables or databases relational, I can type all that stuff together. So clients within particular videos, expenses and so on. Uh, this app has really been a game changer for me in terms of productivity organizing my content and just organizing my thoughts. Before this, I was just using Apple Notes for almost everything content related and that turned into a giant mess. So with Notion, it gives me a lot more structure and a framework that I can work from. And the nice thing about it is I can customize it to be as structured as I want because I do think there is a fine balance between being over-prepared and just being able to run with ideas without too much structure. That can really help on the creative side of things as well, which is the next thing that I wanna get into. Uh, there's a set of apps that I have to mention that really help me with all my videos wallpaper packs, and that I just generally enjoy more than most creative apps. And that is Affinity Photo and Designer. I've been using Affinity Designer since it first came out. I want to say around 2014 or 2015 sometime and photo as well since it came out. I love the simplicity of the UI in both of these applications, especially when dealing with colors and gradients. I just find it to be a lot less clunky than a lot of other design apps. And while I do still edit a lot of photos in Lightroom, I could use Affinity Photo as a replacement for that if I wanted. And I almost always put the finishing touches on all my thumbnails in Affinity Photo. If I'm making a wallpaper pack or doing any illustration at all, I'm definitely doing that in Designer. They recently released a version two of both of these apps and there are some new features I love like stacking effects, which I use a lot on text layers. And they've added some more options for non-destructive adjustments as well and a bunch of stuff that I haven't played around with or frankly even know about. Now, it used to be that you had to pay for each of these apps for each platform, so iPad, Mac, and Windows, but with version two, you could just buy the whole suite and have it work across all platforms. Uh, it is the most expensive product that I'm gonna talk about today with a suite coming in at $169 but you do only pay that once, so no subscription fees. You can buy these individually for each platform as well, but in my opinion, the best value is definitely buying the suite. You'll notice that when I go to purchase it, everything is in silly Canadian dollars. So when I'm looking at stuff for the channel, a lot of the time I'll connect to a VPN in the USA so that everything shows up in US prices. And for that, I use an app called Winscribe. Winscribe is a VPN and I've tried quite a few of them over the years, but what I like about Winscribe is I can have up to 10 gigabytes of data free per month. And personally, I never go over that. I use a VPN pretty sparingly, whether that's for viewing websites from the US or I'm building an app and I need to be hitting off a server in the States. I've been building apps before where the client would be based in the US or in Europe and 
in order to see something like ads correctly, you'd have to be located in a specific region. So I've got enough options with a free version of Winscribe to be able to handle those use cases. Also, anytime that I travel and I'm on hotel Wi-Fi or something, I always use a VPN on any public network. And it's definitely something to think about if you haven't already. A lot of these networks will leave you more susceptible to attacks. And not only that, some companies who own these public access points will actually monitor and sell your data. Using a VPN can kind of create a private tunnel for lack of a better term that helps prevent that. So it's worth looking into. Like I said, I get 10 gigs free every month, but if you wanna stay connected at all times, or if you need more locations or more speed and you just need to get more out of it, it'll run you 69 a year. Nice. Finally, last but not least is a free app called Amphetamine. This is an app that I find really useful when I want my Mac to stay awake for a certain period of time. Oftentimes for me, that's when I'm taking photos for thumbnails or shooting B-roll of a Mac or a monitor where I want the screen to stay on. But also if I'm watching content or doing something where I need my machine to stay awake, see if there's some kind of network connection I need to maintain. Amphetamine allows me to set a specific time I want my machine to stay awake without having to go into my Mac settings and switch everything from there. I used to do that and then I just forget that I'd done it and wonder why my screen wasn't turning off so with this app I don't have to worry about that and it just keeps everything simple and efficient. That's really why I rely on all these apps. They simplify tasks, streamline efficiency, and just boost my productivity and stimulate my creativity and just overall enhance my experience using my Mac. There are loads of other apps that I use every day and I'd be more than happy to expand on this list but I would love to know what everyone else uses for their favorite apps. Do you use something that I've named here today and do you use it differently and what are some of the apps that you found really really useful that I didn't talk about today. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you found this video useful or entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. If you wanna see more tech related content or if you wanna recreate a Star Wars battle using pool noodles as lightsabers, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.